whoever told you that jet boil was only good for boiling water was wrong. There's been a misconception that jet boil is only good for boiling water, and that is true with the jet boil flash, which is kind of their claim to fame. They boil a liter of water in 100 seconds. This is not that. This is actually designed and made to be able to simmer and control the flame way better than the flash did. And I'm going to use the UST Trekker stove for an example. This has a regulator built on. This one does not. Same thing with the flash. There's no regulator. The Jetboil Mighty Mo has a regulator built on. And actually anything in Jetboil's lineup that has Mo in the name has a regulator. What this does is actually helps control the flow of gas coming out into your flame. Versus this UST Trekker stove. It's more like a flow control valve because you don't have a regulator. So all the pressure all at once. And you can hear it when you open up these valves and how loud they are. And so when we open this up, you get a lot of flame within a full turn. And I can control this one decently and kind of get it to a good simmer. And I've used the UST Trekker stove for a couple of years now, and it's been a great stove for being able to simmer. But this, this stove has four full turns to wide open throttle. And so if I crack it open, I actually have to turn it. There we go. And now I can turn it back down and regulate this flame with a lot of control. Here's one full turn. And I can keep going and still have this tiny flame all the way to wide open. Now the other benefit of using a stove with a regulator is cold weather performance. This USD Trekker stove does not have a regulator on it and it's really designed to be ran around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and up because the gas in this canister is designed to run about 40 to 60 PSI which is where this stove is optimal. This stove is actually designed to run down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit which puts the pressure inside the canister around 15 to 20 PSI. And with this regulator on there, that helps be able to control the flame and have a good burn. Now, what we'll do is we're going to switch cans. This is 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the temperature in the garage. And we're going to switch to a can. And so we're going to switch to this can, which is whew, cold. This just came out of the freezer. My freezer is set to zero. It measures between negative one and zero Fahrenheit. And fresh out of the freezer, we're gonna light this thing up. So that's wide open. Now, sure, this is a very small flame, but this is the same size flame that we had set before for being able to actually set the temperature really low if we wanted to simmer food. And I can actually control this all the way down. Now, I'm gonna turn this off. And flip it to this UST stove. So I wanted to pause here for a moment because I forgot one very important thing in this video to mention that when in cold environments the non-regulated stoves will burn off all the gas vapor inside the canister faster than the liquid can actually vaporize and maintain the, the pressure of the canister. So the longer the stove will burn the flame will get smaller and then you'll eventually just have a complete flame out. With a regulated stove that's designed to operate at a lower temperature and pressure it will do better at maintaining the canister pressure because it's not burning off every single little bit of gas that's inside the canister and just, you know, maintaining its canister pressure. So, but back to the video. When you buy the Jet Boil Mighty Mode, it comes with the bag, it comes with the stand, you have the stove, it has the piezo buzzer built onto it. But what's nice about this stove is also the way the pans fit on there. Now, just to kind of give you an idea on how big the surface area is on this pan. 
And what I like about the teeth on these arms is it actually lines up really well with the bottom of the jet boil frying pan. So that way when you center it, it doesn't slide as easy as it does with one of the Sea to Summit pans. So the Sea to Summit pan, it slides around a lot, but with the jet boil frying pan, these grooves in there kind of help keep it centered and you know where you're at and it doesn't slide as easily. Now with any pan and the bigger the pot you get, you do have to find the center and balance it. But like I said, with these grooves, it kind of makes it easy to find the center and not have to worry about am I off center or not. And it prevents it from sliding too much and, not, and sliding off the stove. Compared to the Sea Summit one, it'll slide off. I've been using this stove over the past year and I really enjoy the ability to control the flow and get a nice low simmer to it, especially when I'm cooking food like chicken or potatoes because I don't want the outside to just fry really fast and not be done in the middle. And this actually helps me control that temperature without having a hot spot right in the middle that's just wide open. As always, if you have any questions about gear, feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to help. Our contact information is in the description below.